Good morning, folks. We've got three sunspots on the Earth-facing disk, surge activity, coronal hole stream impact, news articles, a hurricane look, storm watch for New Zealand, and a food watch as well. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star to be middle of the road in terms of surface activity. It's more so on the left, but without any large solar flares or eruptions. The space weather story this morning is coronal hole stream impact. It lit up auroras around the poles last night, but was not strong enough to produce a geomagnetic storm. Of course, what everyone watching here is waiting for is a look at the sunspots. Two sets of bright loops at the left side and one just ahead of the southern system on the Earth-facing circle already. The major sunspot from earlier this month is much less active and dangerous than before, but the lead umbra up north appears asymmetrical and the one out ahead, the little guy, actually grew some peripheral sunspots overnight as surface surges aimed at the little active region. Jolts of plasma mean we have to monitor them today there, while we here see the total expanse of the northern coronal hole system. Its solar wind is expected to arrive Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Couple articles of note. One is actually a flurry of articles released in preparation for the 35th Cosmic Ray Conference, highly relevant for the future of understanding climate change. And also a decent piece on why size matters for exoplanets in terms of detecting and analyzing their atmospheres, but mass does not, meaning that the gravity of large planets does not preclude atmospheres bulging out to detectable ranges. Folks, it's been a few weeks since we did a food watch, but as Equinox spells a shift, Let's look around at how the climate is treating us, and while snow and record cold begins to be set in the U.S. already, we're coming out of southern winter, and it was not kind to everyone. Western Australia taking a major haircut off the top-line revenue from their wheat crop due to frost, followed by drought. We are still seeing the more anomalous monsoon patterns in the eastern world, and the effect is felt financially and emotionally. But perhaps the roughest go came to parts of South America. Now, while some parts actually had an okay winter there, when the southern half of a country loses half its agricultural production due to drought, it is a big deal. Bolivia is flanked by Brazil and Argentina, and both had major trouble in the coffee and banana sectors as well. Price effects and the ripples are in the pipeline. Quickly looking at the pressure between Australia and New Zealand. This is a convergence line like we noted two days ago, running up the center of the United States. And regardless of the hemisphere, that is where we find the storms, and they are slated to come in all night and into the morning there. Hurricane Maria is slated to come ever so close to the Outer Banks and Hatteras before rushing out to sea. Let's hope that model holds true, because any deviation, and it's a major U.S. landfall. We've got your wind maps, null school, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.